Yo, what's good everyone? Welcome back to another video. And today I want to talk about a concept. I want to talk about something that almost no one has covered in this online space, the self improvement space, this business space. Everyone talks about mindset, but there's this one concept that's really, really helped me and has changed the trajectory of my life multiple to multiple times. And I wanted to do the same for you. So I'm going to share it with you today. I'm going to show you some examples as well to put it into context. So I hope you enjoy. Make sure you like, you comment and you subscribe, especially if you're new to the channel and listen up. So about one year ago when I arrived here to the Philippines, so right now I'm in Manila, Philippines. I'm back in, I'm, I'm Filipino. I'm actually full Filipino, but I lived in the UK. I moved to the UK when I was seven and then I lived there majority of my life. And then only recently did I come back to the motherland, the Philippines on my own. So I was living on my own for, for the first three weeks. I lived in the province with my Lolo and Lola, basically my grandparents just to get my bearings straight, just to make sure, you know, I could plan my next moves. And also just, just to see family, you know, to see family, to see friends I hadn't seen since childhood. Um, and those next, those first three weeks were really nice, but I was starting to get an itch. I was starting to get not a bit irritated because there's not many opportunities in the province. There's not much that you can really do. Not much, you, there's no real way to grow in there. Like, I feel like, most of the growth happens when you're around other growth-minded people, when you're around other killers, when you're in an environment where you're not the big fish, where you're actually the small fish in the ocean, and you're in a city, like a big city, for example, like Manila. So about two, three weeks in, um, before I actually went to the Philippines, before I moved back, my, uh, my aunt knew about this. She knew about my trip, and she offered me to stay at her condo because she had a condo in, in Quezon City, before I'd initially actually um, refused the offer because I didn't really like the condo. It's kind of kind of old. No one's really used it. No one's used it for the past four to five years. So it needed cleaning too. It needed to be like worked up a little bit. It was a little bit old. So I initially said no. But two or three weeks in being in the province, I was getting really sick and tired of it. So I went back to her and I basically changed my mind. I said, yes, you know what? I'll take the offer. I'll move into the condo if you don't mind. So all the expenses would be paid except for bills, like electricity bills, utility bills. But other than that, the rent payment has been fully covered by her, which is great. So I'm essentially staying at a place for free. So I'm, I'm staying at a place for free. I'm in a new country. I'm back in my motherland. I have family near me. About two, three weeks in, I get sick of the province. And then I make the move to Quezon City, which is a part of Manila, right? So I make the move. I'm super happy. Yes, the condo is, again, it's a bit old, but it'll do, especially if I'm staying there pretty much for free. So I move in, and one thing that has been on my mind and one thing that I'd struggled with for a long ass time before I moved into this place, into this big city by myself, was my social skills, was making friends. Because back in school, I used to be very introverted. I used to be very reserved. I used to be very scared of what people would think, very self-conscious. I used to have low confidence, so low self esteem, low self esteem. It would reflect into my outer life. It would reflect into, you know, my popularity in school. Like I really wasn't that popular in school. I was just the guy who had a lot of friends. You could say knew a lot of people, but wasn't didn't really have a solid set of set of friends. I didn't really have a solid group. I didn't have you know strong I didn't have strong friendships. Um, I also struggled like with girls too. Like I didn't have a girlfriend. Uh, for what, what, like during an age when most people had their first girlfriends. Um, and I was just minding my business too. But low-key, it was a cope for the fact that I had poor social skills. I struggled to make friends in school. I was shy. I was self-conscious. I had low self-esteem. And this was something I'd been trying to fight. This was something I'd been trying to, to get over for a long-ass time. A really, really long time, actually. Only till recently did I get over it and did I help myself out of it. Right, so how does this link to me moving into Manila, me moving into this brand new condo? So when I moved into the condo, I had all the cards stacked for me. So as soon as, as soon as I moved into the condo, I was doing pretty well. Like I had a really good month. July was a really good month. So this is July now, last year. I just moved into my, my aunt's condo. I'm staying there pretty much for free. It's a brand new city, new place to explore, new place to take over, new chance to make friends. Um, also adjusted the culture. I'd also was still appointment setting full time at the time. I just hopped on a really good offer. And literally within the first month, I had my like best month. I, I think I made like 
touching just just above four thousand dollars, just for just about four thousand dollars in commission, in setter commission. That was great. I was over the moon. This was like one of my best months at the time. The best month that I had up to that date was four thousand dollars in USD, helping on a new offer. So I made, I had my record month. Moving to a new place. I was alone. Um, I was in like Manila. I was in my old country, my motherland, and I had seen people I hadn't seen in years. I had all the stack. I had the call. I had all the cards in my favor. Except my social skills. Except this underlying insecurity about me struggling to make friends. This underlying insecurity of thinking about oh, what would people think about me? Uh, oh, like I, I don't really like. I don't really like socializing because I just want to stay at home, you know. But while I was comfortable, it was very, very, very hindering to my growth. Like I, I didn't grow much. I really didn't. I struggled to grow. You know, locking myself in my room all day. It's, it's not good, right? It's not good for you, especially as humans. Like we're biologically social creatures. So introverts, especially who just lock themselves in the room all day, who don't go out, who don't enrich themselves in experience, that's not good. So this is the concept that I'm gonna, that you guys have been waiting for. That's helped me get over that permanently. Cause I remember, like I said, this is something that I've struggled with for a long ass time, for 18, 19 years, 20 years, actually 20 years, we'll say. So 20 years, I've been struggling with this, and then the only reason did I get over it, because it's one concept. And this one concept was, it's good to have all these goals, it's good to have all these dreams and aspirations. I had plenty of goals, I knew how I wanted to be more confident, have like higher self-esteem, being able to talk to people without any filter, and just not care what people think. It's cool, everyone has those goals, a lot of people have those goals. But it's another thing, and there's even more power to deciding that you no longer want to live the current life that you're living. You no longer want to relive, you no longer want to repeat current behaviors, current experiences, current habits, etc. You're sick and tired of the life that you currently have or your past life, and you're willing to change to make a new one. Essentially, you could say this is the concept of the change of, the change of growth is better than the change of staying the same. The pain of growth, the pain of change is better than the pain of staying the same. And let me get into that deeper because this is something that goes over people's heads so much. This is something that a lot of people have heard, they'll dismiss it because they've heard it so many times. Yeah, we get it. Okay, cool. Better to, better to, to change instead of staying the same, right? We get it. But this is what really caused me to change because it has to get to a point, guys, where you no longer want to live another day of living the same life that you're currently living, of feeling that discomfort, that unsatisfaction, that unfulfillment, that frustration, that, that frustration of you living the same thing, the same way that you've been living over and over again. It has to get to that point, guys. Otherwise, you're not going to change. Like us humans, change only happens if we're in enough pain or we have enough desire or both. This is what led me to becoming a more social person, becoming a more confident person, having a higher self-esteem, having a better mindset, building a sick ass network, not just here in Manila, but also online worldwide. It's what helped me get even better with expressing myself, even here on YouTube. Like it's helped me, you know, talk, it's helped me with, with closing more deals. It's helped me with my business. It's helped me with talking more confidently on camera like this. It's also helped me with me, meeting new people. It's helped me in every single way. Like social skills, this is super, super important. You need to get good at it, all right? And this is something I struggled with. This is something I never thought I'd be good at. And lo and behold, that was the identity I had for a long time. But what caused that change, what caused me to drop that identity and life taking a turn for the better is deciding at that point, I no longer wanted to live the current life I was living. I made a decision to do things differently. So that's the concept that really helped me. That's the concept that changed my life, that changed the trajectory of my life deciding that I wanted to do something different, okay? So, yeah, that's pretty much it. That also, you know, that, that decision, I'd unknowingly made that decision. Every time there's been, a, there's been a big change in my life, I'd unknowingly made that decision to not continue what I was doing and to make a change. Because as I said, there's a lot of people, this is like, like newbie level goal setting. This is newbie level way to get to your goals is, you know, setting these goals. Cool, but they just remain as goals but it doesn't hold you accountable. It doesn't cause any real change in your day-to-day -day life. Like there's no sacrifice, there's no standards. You get to, you can fantasize all day about these dreams, these goals, these aspirations that you have. You can look at your vision board all day, you can tweak it all you want. But if you're just gonna carry on doing the same things that you're currently doing, that's led you to where you are. Like 
all the actions that you had, all the thoughts and actions that you've had up until this point has led you to where you are. So if you're going to keep doing that, you're going to keep repeating it and nothing's going to change, then expect to have the same results. Expect nothing to change. Expect you to keep staring at that vision board, to keep having these goals and aspirations and them staying as goals and aspirations, okay? I had unknowingly made this subconscious decision. I feel like you'll know if, you, if it's kicked in, when it's kicked in, like you'll just know. You'll just know, you'll wake up one day and you're like, okay, I'm serious about this. Like I'm 100% serious about this. I no longer want to feel the pain of, of what I was currently doing before anymore. Like you'll know, you'll know when you've, a switch hits, okay? And I'd know, unknowingly make this decision. I'd unknowingly made this decision whenever there's been big shifts in my life. For example, another big shift. I made that decision that I no longer wanted to feel the pain of staying the same. I wanted to make a decision here or not to do things differently when I was stuck at home in my, my parents' house. I freshly dropped out of uni. So a year before that, I freshly dropped out of uni. I forced, I had to move back in my, with my parents. I didn't really have a plan. To be honest, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was still broke. Like I, pro I promised them um, from my first, when I first started uni to the end of uni that I'd be successful and I'd make something out of myself. I'd had receipts. I had no receipts. I had no receipts. So when I moved back home, I was super stressed. I was frustrated in myself. I got into a lot of arguments, a lot of fights, a lot of disagreements. They were telling me to get back into my nine to five, to get back into the nine to five, you know, apply for a job, etc. Um, and yeah. I was very, very frustrated. I had to move back home with parents and I just sat there because I didn't know what to do. My old business didn't work out. I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing, but it's just not gonna work out. I wanna do something different. I need cash as soon as possible. I need to make money as soon as possible. And then the switch that I made was when I got exposed into the digital nomad life. When I got exposed to, when I started seeing people, uh, for example, one of my mentors, Jack Hopkins, shout out Jack. When I saw him move to Thailand, when I saw him move to Thailand and it didn't take that, many, that much money to make the move, like only a couple thousand, and he was able to make the move. And that had actually been the dream life for me for a long time. Living on a tropical island in a nice ass villa with a pool, seafront view, with the boys, trading Muay Thai, sipping coconuts by the beach. That was like the biggest, that was like my dream life at the time. That was my dream life. And I didn't know this whole world opened up to me that you could do that already with just a few thousand dollars. All you had to make was a few thousand dollars book a plane ticket and then figure out the rest. So as soon as I found that world out, I'd also made the decision that I'm talking about to you today in this video. I'd made that decision that I no longer wanted to be here anymore. I no longer wanted to stay where I was at. I no longer wanted to be in my parents' house. I decided at that day, I'd do things differently and I would get the fuck out of there. And to this day, it might just sound like I'm criticizing my parents, my family, I'm not doing that. Yes, it wasn't the easiest time back then, but right now we have the best relationship there is. It's funny that like, like distance heals relationships. Distance, distance heals a lot of things and time heals a lot of things. When we were at our closest together in terms of distance, we weren't in the best terms. And then when they see their boy grow up, you know, actually make a move, do take, do take risks, etc., and Nick, he can rely on himself, then I guess that's just, uh, that just get, garnish a lot of respect. And we still talk to this day, we catch up on Messenger and WhatsApp, etc. right? So all the big decisions that I made in my life and the point I'm trying to make here, guys, and this is if you start thinking in this way, your life is going to change for the better, guaranteed, is if you rather than focusing on the big goals and aspirations and looking up and glorifying your goals, you need to set standards. You need to think in a more standards uh, way of thinking where you won't settle for anything less. You won't go below your standards you will no longer tolerate moving forward the life that you're currently living. You are currently unsatisfied with, this, with the situation that you're in. Therefore, you won't do anything. You won't go any longer to keep reliving this, to keep repeating old habits, to keep doing what you're doing. You have to, like I saw it, like in my mind when I made that decision to start going out a bit more, to socialize, to not just lock myself in my room all day, to actually actively practice my social skills back in Manila when I, when I moved into, into QC, into Quezon City a year ago, I saw it as a crossroads, right? This is me, this is the crossroads. And then it would split into two. This path was to keep going where I was going and I could either choose this or I could make the decision today and go here and start a new life and start a new identity and start changing for the better. 
yes, you'll be comfortable. Change is, this, change is, is uncomfortable. But what's more uncomfortable, like I said, is repeating the same life that you have. If you're, not, if you're not happy with it, if you're not satisfied with it, if you know you could be doing a lot better, you have a lot of potential, yet these, you know, year after year, they just, they just keep being dreams, they keep being things that aren't happening in reality, then that's, that's very painful. That, that's just a lot of pain in that. If you don't feel pain in that enough, then maybe you don't want to change enough. Yeah? You don't want to make a change enough. Yeah? So I'd seriously look into that. But yeah, guys, that was like, this is like the one concept that's caused bulletproof change. This is the actual tangible piece of advice that has caused me great change, great results in my life. That's gotten me out of you know, toxic, you could say, repeating habits and loops. And I hope it does the same thing for you. You need to make a decision today that you want to make a change because the pain of change is still worth it. The pain of change is better than the pain of staying the same. You need to start thinking in that lens and trust me, your life is going to be a lot better, okay? And I will keep using this. I'll keep using this way of thinking moving forward because I know it's helped me and I'm just going to be on my way up. Like not even in an arrogant way, it's just in a confidence way. It's just like I know I'm going to make it in a couple of years. I know I'm going to be so much more successful because I'm thinking in a way that serves me, okay? So I want you to start thinking that way. Don't focus so much on the aspirations, the goals, the big dreams, because you're just looking up at them. You're not actually looking at the day-to-day -day behavioral changes because what you do is gonna impact the results that you have in life. You looking at these goals, this vision board all day, but you not making a change, you not doing the things you need, you not doing your outreach, you're working out, your, your connections, building your connections, etc. cetera. That's, that's not gonna make a change. If you don't do those, you're not gonna make a change, all right? So start doing the things you need to do Make a decision today moving forward that you are in so much pain in your current situation, you no longer want to relive it for another day and life is gonna be so much better, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this YAP session. If you did, make sure you like, you comment, you subscribe if you're new to the channel. Link in the description for my Instagram, my socials, my Twitter, if you wanna to talk to me. But yeah, I hope this really helps, guys. This is what really helped me personally, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next one.